Hello, let's talk about the build that I did in Season 3 Hardcore Mode, and that is Spinning Dagger Thorn Explosion. I haven't played on this build for a while, but let's deep dive into this and talk more about the general idea and the approach to it, and what can be done to, to improve it further. Skillboard right now looks like this, and there are a difference when I'm doing maps and when I'm doing like the sim raid. So that difference is that I remove my mana storm from the spinning dagger, cause uh, I can't sustain my mana, cause I didn't win for mana resource cost dampening on an items. So if I use just low armor in here, I sustain my mana and my damage actually increases. But the problem with the low armor is that it only applies stacks one at a time. So it's really not worth to keep it on maps and mana storm basically increases my damage on maps significantly. So this is the one difference. <clears throat> the main idea about this build is that I went for area effect stacking. Area effect doesn't work on the spinning dagger Verity Awakening, but area damage works. So that basically enabled me to stack area effect on Thorn Explosion without losing the area damage on Spinning Dagger. With that in mind, I managed to hit more than 280 explosion range. That means my Thorn Explosion, the three projectiles on the Awakening side, can now da deal damage to one small target. So I don't lose any single target damage. And my map clear is, clearing is still okay. Of course I have to run area effect in order to hit that 280. And I have area effect on my relics too. Everything else on the awakenings on the links is basically just more damage. Everything is awakened to have more damage. Nothing else. Damage, confidence again, more damage. Everywhere is damage. I'm still using quick attack, but that's the only reason that I didn't manage to get enough attack speed on my items. The next upgrade in here would be to remove quick attack and add more damage. But I kinda stopped playing and I didn't manage to reach attack speed cap without the quick attack. Right now it's 4.4. If I had this without the quick attack, I would switch it immediately. Because then attack speed doesn't do much. Flat damage would, would, would make it more sense, or like damage amplification, or anything that I could fit in the spot. And what I could fit instead of quick attack, it would probably be maximize damage. This, this big boy. It kinda looks weird, but let's talk about this one. Because this one is what you want to do when you start to hit a lot of damage. So it looks kind of weird that you get mi minus 100 critical damage, but that's not a big deal because at this point I'm running around 800 I think. Yeah, 817, right? So losing 100 on 800 is not a lot. It's around 17%, 15%, something in that order. But at the same time, that awakening on maximized damage is you can awaken it to increase your critical rate damage so you don't lose as much actually but what this enables and it's only making sense to use this then you have triple maximized damage on yourself we can check how much i have i have 8.3 percent triple and 24 double maximized so and this comes from my charms. It comes from this big boy. Chance to deal maximize damage on hit. So it says maximized, it doesn't specify. That means it increases both. This is basically how you get damage when you're already hitting billions in the end game, is by getting maximized damage on uh, legendary charm prefix. This is the best way to basically increase your damage. This is what people do, and that's why people use that maximize damage increase link rune later into the game.
because these jumps and that link rune increases our damage by a lot and and this is basically the main idea in this case I'm running Maxman as my attack enhance, I'm running Seal of Critical Chance as my main attack seal, and I'm running Seal of Striking as my rapid seal. Instead of running Seal of Striking, you could run a Weekend Totem that activates using Marksman. But with the Weekend Totem, the problem is that, that it's stationary. So if targets move out of the uh, Weekend Totem area, you just lose damage. So picking up Seal of Striking makes more sense as it's a buff. I have Decrease Duration on it, cause you hit a breakpoint when Decrease Duration actually increases your damage. But be careful, if you do that early into the game you're actually gonna lose damage cause you want a little bit higher uptime. I'll have Enhance Effect with Attack Enhance Skill Rune Effect Awakened. Then again, increase duration, again, only looking for skill rune effect. That's what you're aiming for later into the game on these awakenings. This is more cooldown recovery, it makes sense. <clears throat> so this would be the main idea. I could fit weekend totem, I could switch some spots, but in hardcore when you die, you lose your skill board open slots. And uh, I'm kinda hesitated to use strong crystals, but the next way to increase your damage would be weekend totem. But Weekend Totem is not gonna improve your mapping by the way, cause it's only gonna be basically single target damage increase. And when you know the mechanics, cause if you don't know, don't know mechanics, you don't know when to put that Weekend Totem, it's just gonna die immediately. It's not that bad when you're using elemental builds, cause you can awaken your Weekend Totem on elemental builds to increase your damage when the Totem dies, but I'm using physical so I can't in this case. Another thing is, I'm using Illusion Arrow and extracting energies. I'm extracting physical energies to get a little bit of physical dampening. And I'm using Center of Gravity, awaken it to Verity, which gives, um, in inverses basically that Center of Gravity. Instead of standing still, I'm, I'm running and I'm getting stacks. But the problem with this, it increases, it gives decent amount of stacks. It gives you four stacks, so it's around 240% damage multipli multiplier at four stacks. But the problem when you awaken it, to give it damage when you're moving instead of standing still, it does not benefit from the legendary upgrade. It doesn't give plus five max position stacks. It's only plus four. But it's actually nice. It only wastes one spot. It gives decent amount of damage multiplier it works really well on maps by the way i like this one really mu a lot i wouldn't aim for it too early it kind of doesn't matter too early but later when you have a few open slots on the skill board and i'm already using illusion axe to get physical damage it's not a bad idea another thing is my shadow provocation shadow duration is 6.3 seconds cooldown is six seconds and the thing with shadow provocation is that it actually goes on cooldown, not when it ends, but when you press it. So this basically means I have 100% uptime on my Shadow Provocation. Shadow Provo gives me a lot of damage, first thing. And another thing, it gives me arm amplification. But I need arm amplification because I'm running main dodge and secondary armor. And this basically gives me like three times my armor. It's really nice. On the awakening side, you just, again, you just look for skill rune effect. Is Hushed Shout Source, Lingering Shout Origin, skill rune effect, cooldown recovery, yep, yep, yep. And then the same increase duration and enhance effect on Shadow Provocation too. And then buff activation when hit. This is a nice one. Then I have Shadow Justice. Shadow Justice is to remove CC. It, 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 there is nothing much to say about this one. As much cooldown recovery to reduce the CD. Uh, duration doesn't matter, because you only care about the proc to remove the CC. And of course buff activation when crowd, crowd controlled. Another big one is Veil of Protection. This one I like the most. This is basically necessary for the builds in the end game. Because with this one you can pick up projectile damage taken decrease. And there are not that many sources that you can pick up projectile damage shake and decrease. 
And this is the best one. But you increase a little bit of melee damage taken, but that's not a big deal. The dampening is way higher than the increase. It makes a lot of sense, but when you're using that, you need to check your buff UI to see that you're using Wind Veil instead of Earth Veil, because increasing projectile damage is not gonna be good. I'm using Seal of Chaos Resist, but this shouldn't be Chaos Resist. This should be actually physical domain dampening to reduce the physical damage. But um, I don't have enough chaos stress, so I'm using this one, but the correct one would be the physical domain in, in, in this build. In this stage, I'm only using one movement ability, but it's awakened to plus two use count, and I have six. This is enough. You don't. You could use disarm on it, but I don't have spots. I don't want to waste strong crystals this late into the season. And it's not a big deal, it has, like, 6 tanks is more than enough for me to move on the map. And my movement speed is decent too, so I don't feel like I need to press the penetrating slash so much often. So I always have a stack prepared, basically. So, let's check my stats. This is basically my dam- this is my non-enhanced damage, without using the Marksman. On 155. But what I want to talk about in here... Okay, maybe I'm gonna talk about critical rate. This one is important, right? It says that I have 100 critical rate. Almost 100. But guys, that's not true. My actual critical rate on the level maps that I'm doing, because this is only level 100, is much lower. Do not believe the tooltip. Tooltip is not what you think what it is. So, right now, I have 99.6. I'm gonna increase the max level of the Scarecrow. Reload that. And it went down to 54. Yeah, remember this one. Map level decreases your critical rate. And this is important. Always test your damage on the level targets in the training arena that you are going to do your maps. Otherwise, you are being lied and you believe the lie. A lot of people say, oh, I have 100% critical rate. I'm going to remove 5 beingness out of my skill board. And then the damage just plummets, and they don't understand what's going on. This this one, right? What else I want to talk about is my defenses, actually. Because the map level also decreases my defenses. So right now I have 34%. And when I proc my uh, Shadow Provocation, I have around 50. But I actually made a mistake. Because this is where it gets really sad. And... One of the reasons that I stopped playing, when I transferred my helmet, I lost armor. Armor multiplier in here, and it plummeted my stats. I could barely do 1 for 6 maps anymore. I should be doing 150s right now, but I'm just dying on those maps, and I'm playing hardcore. I don't want to die, I kinda left it there. My helmet was decent, nothing too, too insane. Two authorities, cooldown recovery speed, and hand skill rune effect, but I lost armor, and it just... I just stopped playing after that. But yeah, we can talk about more. This one, shoulders is, is simple. Again, dodge rate, multiplier, HPs, skill rune effect. That's That was crafted on Totem Perfect Dodge. You can pick up um, Chaos Resistant here, but at the time I had enough, so I just went for skill rune effect for more damage. Legendary roll is random, right? It's good one, but you, you can't aim for this. It's way too hard to get. I didn't do my chest anymore, I wanted to do, do uh, dual authorities in here to pick up uh, physical damage, to pick up actually reflect damage and roll reflect damage into physical damage jump. That would be the way to do it. But these rolls are kinda good, so I kept it as, as, as the way it is. Gloves are simple, I picked up attack speed amp on one authority, physical damage flat on another one. This is decent gloves. Legendary roll is sad, but otherwise it's really nice ones. Can't be much that much better. Only higher affixes. Boots are decent. I pick up picked up resource cost. Picked up projectile damage. It works on both my spinning dagger and torn explosion. Strike damage works on both. Movement speed and on dual authority I picked up skill rune effect. And picked up uplift on the craft. There is a lot of min maxing to do by the way. Higher, tier, higher tiers, 
and but uh, crafts, but I kind of gave up on those. Neck is simple. Neck is of course damage jump on every hit, then physical damage, HPs, physical damage, crit, crit implicit. My belt is uh, resource cost, mana potion effect, because I'm still running out of mana by the way. I kind of didn't fix it, but the only way to fix it, it would be to pick up a resource cost implicit on the gloves and on the shoulders. I could do that, but maybe I'm gonna do, but for right now it is what it is. My rings, I don't know, I crafted these rings like at the start of the season basically and it didn't change those. Didn't have enough fill, but crit damage, critical rate, critical damage you rolled, area damage. This one lacks attack speed, that's why I can't switch quick attack. If I had attack speed in here, I could switch. This one, this one is actually nice. Yeah, same idea. My weapons are garbage, I'm telling you that right now. <clears throat> this is not what you want on your weapon, but... Right now, what should be done is... Uh, I need to pick up physical damage. Physical damage uh, amplification on my prefix roll on the weapon, on both weapons. Even though this is not bad, this at least has a flat physical, which is close. But there is a lot of improvements to do and a lot of damage to pick up. Definitely a lot. My Lacrima, that's why I don't have my physical damage rolls on. Uh, on my weapons because I have a lot of flat physical on my lacrima, right? Physical, physical amp, critical damage, then attack speeds as much as I can, even physical damage amplification, attack critical rate, again physical flat, critical damage. All of this could be switched at this stage where I'm at, where I'm right now. You could switch everything to physical damage amplifications. Would be a good time to do that because right now I would benefit out from it. My damage right now when using low armor and um, blasting the 155 level Scarecrow, this is not at least Scarecrow, this is normal Scarecrow, is... We can test it right now. Did enhance. Yeah, as you can see it overlaps on the target. That's why I have the 280 explosion range on my Thorn Explosion. But you can awaken your Thorn Explosion to Source, it's gonna be more single target damage. But I wanted a balance, so I wouldn't need to switch the skills on the maps. Of course it hurts my damage, but I don't really mind. If I would switch to uh, Source Awakening on my uh, Thorn Explosion, I would probably have close to 1 build right now. But it's not a big deal. I'm not that thirsty for the damage. But yeah, around it, I would say it's around 800 on a single target. Not bad. With build like this, with how much time I invested into it, this is decent. Yeah, 870. That's how it looks like. Of course, Stone Explosion does the most damage. And this is how you calculate crit, right? This is the actual critical rate that I have. You check strike count. You need calculator for this. You check strike count, spinning dagger 586, and critical count is 391. So 391 divided by 586, it's around 70% critical rate I have right now. Around 70%. Uh, I do more damage, of course, on the training arena, around 1.1 bill. But, you know, it's lower target level, that's why the damage increases. So, to sum it up, what would I need to increase my damage? It's really simple. First of all, I need to get authority implicit correctly. Gear item quality is what you want on your weapons most of the time. This is, the, this is gonna increase your damage the most. I have physical damage in here, which is not good. It's not that big damage increase. Gear quality would be better. Remember that when you lock, when you do your item legendary, your affixes locks in. It doesn't matter what kind of authority essence you're gonna use. It's not gonna change your stats anymore. It's only gonna change the implicit. So that's a good advice. 
Yeah, again, I would need to I would need to start doing correct dual authorities to roll higher affixes, but this is the easiest one. Rolling bigger affixes, it's always a damage increase and it's the easiest one. On my rings, I could get a authority prefix for damage amplification. That would be a nice damage increase. On the neck, I would need to go dual authority or even triple authority to get more, more damage. Then champs, my, not all of my champs are good, like dot amplification is useless for me. I would need to roll legendary prefixes right now. Some of those are good, some of them are not that good. I probably have like three good charms. This is a good one. Even the legendary is not bad. It gives seal effect, so it increases uh, seal of critical. This one is decent. No, this one is actually bad with elemental resistances. This one is decent. This is one probably the best that I have. Yeah, there is a lot of damage to pick up from the legendaries and from the champs themselves. Plus... My Chaos Star. Chaos Star is basically the, the biggest one that I could do. I rolled a lot of maximized damage, but this one was crafted fast and without actually looking for the best craft. This is whatever I could get at that time. It's not bad, strike damage amplification is nice, but instead of having maximized in here, because it's only double, it's not good. I, I need to get either critical rate or critical damage. Critical rate would be the best. Critical rate would increase my damage the most. Same goes on Lacrima. I would need to pick up legendary Lacrima with one hand or two hand unique and some other stuff to get more damage right now. There are really good uh, unique one handers that increases your damage by a lot if you have a legendary Lacrima. <coughs> Another thing would be to start leveling my skill board. It's like level 35s. Not a lot of damage can be picked up here, but still. Level 45s at this stage would give me decent amount. Because my damage is already decent, it could be much higher with these. Yeah, that basically sums it up. I'm not talking about rune stones. Rune stones, I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm feeling bad every single time I'm trying to get anything out of those. But uh, yeah, if you can pick up like unique runestone with damage jump, that's gonna be good damage increase. I didn't talk about my zodiacs, but my zodiacs are exactly the same as they are on the spinning dagger ton explosion starter build that I have on my channel. I'm gonna link that one. But for now, this is basically I'm basically done. I have nothing much to talk about, but if you have any questions, you can ask them on comments or you can find me on Twitch basically. <clears throat> the right now I'm kind of stopped playing on December. I'm looking forward to last epoch full release. I'm going to come back to on December like at the end of the March when the season 4 is coming. I'm going to do a build on normal without having like any uniques, no nothing like a fresh start build. To prepare for the seasonal re for the season release, what build I'm gonna do? I'm thinking about barrier build because I haven't done any content on that. It should be fun. Maybe even absorb energy because looks like people crank the absorb energy, but the absorb energy was good in season one. Right now it's just plainly broken because of the caprice heart and how easy it it's not easy to get it, but it it's a good neck. And you don't have to use Lacrima for it, you can just equip that neck before to do Absorb Energy. Ah, damn it, I'm not gonna talk about it. There is like a full video to do about that, but yeah. So if you're interested, I'm gonna do like a bow barrier build before the season 4. In the middle of March or something. But yeah, right now, I'm done. I said everything I wanted to say. I hope you learned something. If you didn't learn something, my bad. But if you have some questions, just ask them right away. GG's, have fun, have a nice grind. Go beat the Soul of the Sun raid. I only managed to do how much damage in the Soul of the Sun raid? Yep, 13. Okay, yep. <laughs> nah, that, that thing is cursed, but yeah, GG's, have fun.